Good evening, welcome to the overnight edition of From Day One, and without further ado, here's Art in his final segment. All right, open lines, folks. Anything you want to talk about is absolutely fair game. If you have a comment on uh, what you've been hearing, uh, you're certainly welcome to make that. We've got plenty of people wanting to say something, that's for sure. Let's go to Tulsa, Oklahoma, on the phones. Hi, you're on the air. Hi, Art. Um, First-time caller, long-time listener. Um, I I just wanted to say two things. One, I absolutely love the doctor, and I would be very sad if we were unable to see him again. Uh, He was an excellent excellent guest, and uh, I really enjoyed hearing him. I really hope we get to hear him talk about... uh, Deep space pulsars and black holes and everything else. Sure. Um, and he will thing, come back. He will. We talked about that. He knew what he was facing tonight. I think you know he deserves a gold star for even facing off like this on the subject. Yes, sir. Yep. Um, so the, the other thing was for John. Um, I don't know if he's still on the line with us. No, I, I didn't think that would okay. be fair. Okay. Yeah. So. Um, the the deal I would say for him because uh, he was he was wondering about airplanes traveling on the globe oh, yes. one direction the other direction and right. and what I would do I'd say for him a simple experiment he can do to observe the principles uh, himself would be to sit in his vehicle and accelerate to whatever the speed limit is in his area we'll say 65 miles an hour set cruise control take a pencil or a pen and hold it out and drop it now according to what he's thinking the pen or pencil should fly right straight to the back of the vehicle, not fall down. Um, Because when he realizes that that pen is moving at whatever speed the vehicle is moving, it should be easier in his mind to realize, okay, the entire globe is spinning. Mm -hmm. So all the, everything on the globe is spinning at that rate and everything else is relative to that. And it would be a nice way to illustrate that. I had to explain to a kid recently, um, and I actually went through the same thing, but not for flat earth reasons. The kid was wondering why, I dropped my book bag on the school bus and it didn't fly. Why not? Yeah. Great kid I, question. I wonder how many people embrace. I, I mean, clearly, John truly embraced it. Clearly, John was not a dunce. He was a pretty bright guy. Um, so we, we, you're only left wondering what happened to John. Um, well, you know, some of it might just be isolating yourself from from other views because he was really. I I hate to say close-minded, but he immediately shut down anything about math, science, uh, demonstrable measurements, uh, anything from NASA was all lie. All fakes. You isolate yourself. Yeah. I mean, that that does it. Well, it tells us something about, I don't know what it tells us. You know, it's it's confusing to me because on the one hand, he's, he's, he's a bright guy. Even to sit and be able to argue with the doctor, um... You could tell he was a bright guy, but all twisted up in a way that I can't fathom. You know, and as I'm not sure how old he was, but I assume we're probably in the same generation. Sounds like I love yeah. space, and I'm jealous of your generation. You guys got to see the moonwalk. We we have nothing. We shut down our space program. It's a shame. It's a shame. Well, uh, let me be John for a second. Of course, we shut it down. We couldn't keep up that lie for that long. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. I'll uh, I'll clear the line so you can take the next caller, but I appreciate it, Art. It's been Thanks. a great show. Thank you very much for calling. Take care. I had to bunch of breaks, uh, bunch the breaks up a little bit here. Uh, let's go to, um, gee, I don't know, uh, somewhere in California, I think, on the phone. Hi, you're on the air. Yeah, hi, Art. Um, I'm debating whether to talk about this previous segment or not because there's so much. There's so much fertile ground to, to plow. Oh, I know. But... Uh, instead, I think I'll thank you very much for having Preston Bennett on last week. He cleared something up for me that been, I've been wondering about for like more than 30 years. And if he's correct, what I had more than 30 years ago was a, an out-of-body experience, but it involved witnessing something from a past life. And that's something that I witnessed was my being executed in an electric chair. Oh, my. Yeah, and I figure it was the 30s, maybe the late 20s or in the 30s or possibly the 1940s. What had you done? I don't know. I, it, whatever it was, it was bad enough to be executed. 
Yeah. And I, I, I witnessed the, the hood going over the face from my perspective, and I experienced the, the, the jolt of the electricity. So how was it? Uh, well, it was quick. I will tell you it was quick. Well, in a lot of executions, it's not. If they don't get everything just right, they've had guys' heads catch on fire. It's awful. Oh, I know, I know. But uh, in my case, it, it was, was mercifully brief. Hmm. And uh, you had mentioned one of your hang-ups is, is being afraid. And I tend to think that whatever fear you're experiencing in that sort of experience of OBE is fear that you're bringing with you. Oh, and yes. Just to tell you that sure. there's really nothing there that can harm you other than what you bring along with you to freak you out. <laughs> All right. Well, thank, thank you very much for the call. I, I really okay. appreciate it. Right. Take care. Um, let's see. Okay. Let's, uh, well, no, let me talk about that here. A million times I've tried to tell myself, don't be afraid when these things happen. But going back to my most recent experience, you know, the shadow guy, didn't work at all. Absolutely didn't work at all. From the first second I saw him, I was absolutely terrified. So somebody's going to have to teach me <laughs> how when these things occur, how when a giant triangle appears over you or a shadow guy next to you, you don't be afraid. Instead, you, you relax and you sort of white light yourself, I think people say, and, you know, all the rest of it. Uh, let me go overseas somewhere. Will, uh, you're on the air. Hello. Uh, Bell. Yes, hello. Hey, how are you going, mate? I'm doing well. Sounds Aussie to me. Very Aussie. <laughs> Where are you? Uh, Newcastle in Australia, all East right. Coast. Good to have you. Yeah, good to be on. I've um, followed you for years and years, and, um, yeah, it's great to get through. Seems to me like people in Australia are beginning to discover us big time. Yeah, I, uh, I tell all my friends. So I've um, got a few people tuning in. All right. Uh, hi, people. Yeah. Yes. Anyway, go ahead. Uh, yeah, the, the flat earth stuff from the, the first part of the show. Right. Um, yeah, I, I started seeing videos and stuff on Facebook and YouTube about 12 months ago and thought it was absolutely ludicrous. Um, and then I uh, watched them, they, you know, a couple of hours long and, and did my own due diligence. And um, what I found out isn't too far from what Jay was, uh, was talking about. I've got you, another flat earther. Another flat earther. Yes, well, you know, we need to explore how this happened to you. Um, you were exposed, obviously, to flat earth stuff, propaganda, and uh, somehow you became converted. How long a process was that? Um, probably about six weeks of, of um, really scratching my head, and I spend a lot of time outside at night. And well, You didn't, you didn't, didn't like, scratch it raw or anything, did you? I mean, <laughs> bleeding, possibly a head injury? Uh, you sure? No, 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 no head injury. Look, look, look here. We're at a break point. I'm going to hold you over. All right? Yep. We've got to explore yep. this. I've got to try to understand. There's got to be way Hold on. Audio will return as soon as the musical bumper concludes. audio in just a few seconds.
expands the world. To call us from outside the U.S. and Canada only, use Skype with a headset mic if on a computer and call MITD55. That's MITD55. Thank you, Ross. Uh, we're back, and as a matter of fact, the other side of the globe is where we're going again. Back to Australia and Will, who is another flat earther. Um... And what, what astounds me about the Flat Earthers is they seem otherwise like pretty bright people. So, how does that happen, Will? Um, I don't know. Just, just um, like I said before the break, I spend a lot of time outside at night. And, um, mm -hmm. yeah, just what I, what I was seeing and, and staring at just didn't quite add up. And I just started looking for, for answers why, because the answers that we're told in school and stuff just didn't make sense to me. Hmm. Do you actually think our sun is only 3,000 miles above us? Uh, I'm still undecided on, on how far the sun is away, but... Um, I see, it but, has yeah. to be. I mean, to be really a flat earther, that sun has to be sitting out there 3,000 miles. Or it doesn't work. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I'm not a, I, I wouldn't um, go preaching on people's doorsteps about it, but, um, but it just made a lot more sense to me than, uh, than the globe. Like, um, the evidence they put forward is, is quite good. Well... But, but again, if you want it to be true, then the sun has to be only 3,000 3, miles up. That, that, may, that may be so. I, um, like he said, you have, you have to go off and have a look. There's just uh, you know, no, no real way to tell from down here. Well, do you agree with John that um, all of the NASA stuff, all of the stuff we know about is fake? That's a, um, a big question. Um, Yes yeah, and no, because yeah. last night's show had a lot of stuff to do with it did. they went there, but, but not the way that we know. So Right, yeah. right. but still, even if we went, no matter which way we went, the slow way or the really fast way, it's still 250,000 miles away, to the moon, that is. Yeah. And then there's that 93 million miles to the, to the sun. So, I mean, think about it. We would have passed the sun on the way to the moon. Long since. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. But uh, I'll, just something to think about is when you're looking at, at, a, at a moon, at, not actually, when the moon's still up in the day. So you just say there's a full moon, but you can still see it in daylight, right? Mm -hmm. um, to just say 12 o'clock in the day, the sun's above the moon. The moon's below the sun. Mm -hmm. Still a full moon. You can still see it in broad daylight, yet the sun should be off behind the moon. And we're still getting the same image of the moon. Yeah, the but, same side lit up. But, but, but doesn't the moon block the sun, and we call that an eclipse? That's, that's what I, I just can't work out. I can't justify in my head how it's, the, our globe is, is the reason we have the, the moon changes. So you're, it's, yeah, like, the the, it's like there in Australia, uh, well, you're, you're not down under. You're just over. Just over, yes. Yeah. All right. Well, Will, thank you for the call. I, I really appreciate it. I, I'm just astounded. Thank you very much. I, you know, I really am astounded. I mean, isn't it a thing in itself that um, that people believe as they do? Isn't it absolutely astounding to listen to this? And these are otherwise, it would seem, pretty bright people. Jordan on Skype, you're on the air. Hello. Yeah, Probably when Jordan, you're breaking someone... you're breaking up on me, buddy. Hey, is it better now? A little. The um, sorry, I got you on Skype here. Is it better? Uh, it is better. Yes, go ahead. Let's see if we can do it. Well, um, one thing I wanted to say is I'm not debating whether we landed on the moon or not, but I kind of go with the theory of where we went there, but we ended up finding something. We ended up taking stuff back. Rocks. And I think that, yeah, we ended up, I don't know if we took rocks back. You know, they, they might be alive. <laughs> no, oh, that was just a joke. But oh, uh, good. we're, um, but I also want to hit on one more thing. The, um, I, I wanted to tell you one thing that I, that I listened back in the day um, when you were, uh, you had the, the pilot on, on the phone and he had uh, captured a giant with the military and they were transporting, um, he was transporting a giant. I just wanted to see if you could touch basis on that and kind of recreate that moment. I'm not sure what moment you're talking about. We, we had a pilot on the show who flew into Area 51, um, 
but I don't remember a pilot with a giant. Maybe it was the Area 51 uh-huh. one, and then you had lost you had lost connection with him. Yes, uh huh. That's right. That's exactly right. That was uh, even put into a song by Tool. I mean, it's legend at this point. I I just did. You know, I'm a I'm a young buck. But what, what do you say? <laughs> <laughs> I, I well, there's nothing to say. Thank you very much for the call. It was just astounding radio. What happened to him? I don't know. I'm sorry. I haven't heard. Overseas, somewhere, you're on the air. Hi, how's it going uh, tonight? Thanks for having the debate. Uh, I I love the subject. My name is Ernest. Uh, I am a flat earther. Another one. Ernest, welcome to the program. Where are you, Ernest? Well, right now I'm in the Boston area. I just want to say I make more money probably than most of your calls. Ernest. This is our uh, overseas line, buddy. So no matter how much money you make, if you're in Boston, you can't call on this line. I'm sorry. You know, you have you don't post where the uh, okay where here, the call and yes. information is. Can right. you give me the, the? It's at artbell.com. Okay, thanks. Buddy. Right, thank you. Thank you very much. And call me over there, and we'll talk. That line is restricted for people outside of North America. That means America and Canada, in this case. Um, so if you're outside America and Canada, it's Skype at MITD55. MITD55. Uh, let's go then, uh, I don't know, let's, let's try Chris uh, on Skype. Hello, Chris. I think I tried Chris on Skype. Did I do it wrong? No, I didn't. Chris, are you there? Um, apparently not. Well, let me try it once more. Is this Chris? Hello, Chris. Hello? Turn your radio off, please. Yes, sir. Okay, we'll go we'll hold while you turn off your radio. Thank you. And you're rustling around, too. Uh, hold, hold good and still for me. Hello, Art. Yes, go right ahead, Chris. And turn off your radio, please. It is off. Okay. So I'm talking to Art Bell. You are. Oh, my God. I'm so glad you're back, Art. Thank you. Uh, it's been a long haul, but uh, we've all been waiting, and we're, we're thrilled you're back. Thank you. So I did. Uh, I, I just wanted to thank you also for bringing the uh, GIS people back. Yet to come. On the 20th, right? Yes. I'm looking forward to that. I hope they have some nice uh, new juicy EVPs for us all. I hope yeah, they kind of, um, that show sort of launched myself and my wife into our little amateur ghost hunting and had a couple things. Finally got the feel what it's like to have the hair on the back of your neck uh, come up. And I was uh, doing an investigation in Fairfax, uh, uh, an old building, well, several. Uh, one was, a, it was a tuberculosis uh, hospital and um, a refugee camp for 1906 earthquake victims. And uh, nothing really significant happened um that we felt or saw but uh the last night was pretty strange retrieving my camera at 2 a.m in the morning in a dark bathroom i go to reach for my tripod and i hear uh like you stumbled over someone in an alley or something and no one there quite quite uh startling (laughs) uh well do you have any proof photographic audio uh i got one apparition image um that came after what we thought we heard a woman's voice and we got what looked like a shooting star on a video camera in the house okay if i give you an address can you email that to me absolutely all right here it is artbell at artbell.com and this goes for everybody that's my email address if you want to get a photograph to me then artbell at artbell.com if you want to get somebody on the show don't email me email my producer that would be producer at artbell.com. And I, I give these out so that I don't have to do it all the time um, otherwise. You know, I have to keep emailing people back who are suggesting people, and I appreciate that. Really, truly, I do. Uh, whenever you can suggest somebody for the show, happy to have them on. But please, by all means, send it to producer at artbell.com. Now, let's go to Joshua somewhere. Hi, Joshua. Hi, is it? I beg pardon? I'm in Israel. You're in Israel? 
Yeah. Hey, you're yeah. my my first caller from Israel, Joshua. Welcome. Yeah. Um. So I was just wondering about this whole flat Earth thing. I've <laughs> Lot. I'm born in the United States. Uh, one time I flew to Israel, I flew a very northernly, very northernly route. It was the middle of summer. I was looking out the window and I was seeing snow. Mm -hmm. um, and another time I took a more equatorial route with a couple stopovers. And I don't see how going all of these different directions would make sense if the earth wasn't round. Well, I tried to point that out uh, to John. And, 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 you know, I boiled it down to mileage you can shorten up the trip in actual measurable miles by doing the circle route, right? Right. That, that means it's a big ball. Right. Has anybody ever, you know, offered to fund a flat earth conference, maybe in the lounge area of a 747 while it flew around the world, <laughs> let them actually see it? <laughs> I don't think so, but um, it's not a half bad idea. I, you know, I, they, 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 they seem like intelligent, uh, very scientifically minded people who just doubt the evidence they see in books. Maybe if we get them all on a plane, give them their own compasses so they don't have to trust the equipment in the cockpit, <laughs> but and Joshua, fly it in one direction until it can land at the same place yeah, it took off. I know, but Joshua, they have to throw away so much. I mean, so much has to be fake for what they believe to be true. Our sun has to be 3,000 miles up for what they believe to be true and and you're right I mean they sound intelligent otherwise and so it's a mystery to me it's honestly a mystery I think and I, it seems that there are a lot of flat earthers listening this morning I suggest that one of them who's willing to go on out on a limb try to crown try to crowdfund a meeting of the flat earth society and actually publish the results do this try this See if they fly around the world or see if they find the edge, because I'm sure the rest of the scientific community would be very, very interested in a well-documented discovery of the edge of the world. We'd all love to see that. I, I guess I, I don't want to stand right there, but yeah, I, I, you know, I'd like to see it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you, for, thank you for having me on. Our Joshua, show. thank you for calling. Israel, that's the first call from Israel. And again, outside... Uh, Outside <laughs> North America, it's MITD55, MITD55. Uh, let's try the phones. Um, Holy Alabama, hello. Hello, yeah, this is Rex, Art. I'm hey, glad howdy. to find you back again. Yes, sir, I'm glad you found How did you find me, actually? Well, I'll tell you, I was scanning my shortwave radio, doing uh -huh. a third shift, and I said, this can't be true. And I listened to the program. I became so overwhelmed with emotion. When I realized it was you, street lights began to flicker on and off around me. It was incredible. <laughs> um, that's a great way to have found me. And uh, we are on shortwave, uh, like, I think two or three different stations. Um, so you can find us around the dial. And the funny thing about shortwave is so many of the countries that used to broadcast shortwave have stopped because of the cost involved and other reasons, that there's not much on shortwave worth listening to anymore. So I guess we sort of stand out. You do, and like I said, I, I felt like I found a lost brother, and I want to thank you for coming back on the airways. I have a bit of scientific, uh, intriguing information that you may find uh, innovative. Okay. Uh, our solar technology right now, even on the spacecraft that we the most advanced solar technology, it's still not up in the upper percentage of efficiency, and especially the stuff you put on the roof of your house. Mm. But what if you could create a 100% efficient photoelectric cell that would actually produce a kilowatt of electricity over one square meter? The only way to do that, Art, is to embed or embody uh, alpha or beta particle in a selenium to cause the photoelectrons being thrown off to do that at a faster rate. And if you could create a 100% efficient photo cell, then that could accompany your space flight. So even if you're out there, away, even the Oort cloud, mm -hmm. you're going to be able to power your spacecraft. Now, there's a doctor 
that worked at Los Alamos. And uh, I won't mention his name, but he's from Dallas. He's no longer with us. He's the one who came up with these calculations about this uh, 100% efficient photo cell. And if you could do that, and he also introduced an intriguing method of traveling uh, through the universe. All right, one thing at a time. If you could produce such a uh, solar device, you would be rich beyond belief. The Arabs would be after you. You'd be in all kinds of trouble with um, even the oil companies here. So um, if you, right. if you, yeah, I am right. So if you've got something like that, um, you know, buy a gun. <laughs> well, our, that brings me to a very uh, paranoid feeling, and uh, <laughs> I, I have these equations in front of me right now. All right, well, I'm sorry. We don't have time for the equations, but uh, feel free to email them to me. Be happy to take a look. In the meantime, well, I got If you've really got that, they're going to get you from the high desert. The great American Southwest. This is midnight in the desert, rocking in the nighttime, and taking over. And again, we'll return as soon as the musical bumper concludes. by those that understand how to move in the darkness, like Art Bell. To call the show, please dial 1-952-CALL-ART. That's 1-952-225-5278. After I saw that thing, I moved in the darkness, all right? <laughs> Bring back to my last experience. Listen, everybody, uh, if you want us on a radio station in your area, we're not adverse to it, even though this show is designed to be an Internet radio program. It... Um, it plays just fine on radio stations, and uh, we keep welcoming new ones. So what, what you would do is call a station in your area, preferably one that doesn't carry, you know, the other one, that other show, and uh, tell them you would like to get on and prove to them that they can actually be number one. Uh, let us go to Michelle. I think it's Michelle. Uh, where are you, Michelle? I'm, uh, hi, I'm Art. I'm in Japan. You're in Japan? And, uh, where, I'm sorry, yeah, where, I'm, where I'm, in Japan? It's not very good because I'm at work. Oh, uh, that's okay. I hear you fine. Uh, I would say Ohio Gazimus. What part of Japan, Michelle? <laughs> uh, Shizuoka. Okay, excellent. Well, welcome. Mm -hmm. Near Fuji. So. Right. Um, so, it's, gosh, it's great to hear you again. I've been <laughs> dying to hear radio like that again. Um, <laughs> It's summer, so I don't have anything to do at my uh, job. So I turned in. First time I've gotten to tune into you again. And man, that was the some interview, huh? Um, oh, yes. Uh, we're here every night, Monday through Friday, um, here in the U.S. Great. Uh, so the thing is, when when I came to Japan, we did the, the, the circle thing you're talking about. I mean, we went way up north. And then back down. Sure you and did. I could see it all because I had the window seat. And I just, I can't. I mean, I get that you can make that kind of a theory, but there's so much evidence that he just didn't want to listen to. And that's what bugged me. Well, you know, what bothered me, Michelle, honestly, is that both of these guys that we've had now sounded like otherwise, frankly, bright people. 
is sort of yeah. inexplicably you know, going down this wrong highway. I've been on the internet and on social media for so long that that kind of stuff doesn't faze me anymore. Really? There is no there is no dearth of people out there who will get something in their head, and no matter how intelligent they are, they will refuse to change what it is they believe and will just completely discount. And you can see it everywhere. But the, even oh, even up against absolute yeah, yeah, but even up against absolute scientific fact. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Well, Jean, I know. I, I'm saying... Welcome to humanity, right? <laughs> I guess. Uh, so in, in, in a sense, it, that was radio gold, because never has oh, a, yes, a, an academic like that man sustained 90 minutes of what he did. That's true. I have to give him a massive amount of credit for actually sitting there and, <laughs> and being willing to, to keep that going for that long. That's right. And not just lose it and, and give up. By the way, are you worried about Fuji blowing up? No, not really. Um, it's kind of one of those things that's in the back of my mind, but it's, you know, I'm about, I don't know, 30 miles away, so. Mm. So you must see it real well. Oh, yeah, you can see it right out the window here where I'm at. Mm. Um, I've got some gorgeous, I know I email you one of the pictures I took from my apartment one day. I would love it. I will do that. I will send that to you. I'm so glad you found great us. Great to hear I, you again. I, listen, I am curious. How did you find us? All the way over in Japan. Uh, actually, I clicked on a link on Facebook about something today, and then it showed me a um, one of those related article things about you starting up this new show, and I immediately freaked out because I listen to you um, online with old shows and stuff all the time, constantly. Well, but hearing something new, I was like, well, immediately tell me what it is. Do me a friend and uh, do me a favor and tell your friends. I, I will definitely do that. Well, that'd be like doing me a friend. All right. Thank you very, very much for calling <laughs> and, uh, and take care. All the way from... Uh, hmm, wow. Okay. Um, it's hard to know where to go, but Scott is my guy, and that's where I'm going. Scott, hi. Hello, Hello Scott. Art. Yes. Hey, this is Don, actually. I'm using Scott's computer. <laughs> uh, I'm sure you asked Scott for permission, right? Yeah, yeah. He's uh, letting me use his, his Skype right now. That's good. All right. We're both listening to you on this flat earth thing tonight, and I just wanted to put my two cents in on this. Um, I did a lot of sort of, I guess, just YouTube investigation is what you call it, just sitting around watching YouTube videos about this flat earth thing a couple of months ago. Yes. And what this really seems like to me and to a few other people that, uh, that agreed in comments was this is a psyop this is something designed to muddy the waters, to get people thinking in a certain way, I think. Uh, Toward what end? I don't really know. That's what's interesting. I think the question should be, not is the earth flat, but why are you telling us the earth is flat and who's paying you to do it? Oh, so you... you see what I mean? I, well, kind of, yes. Uh, but, but again, to what end could you even imagine? Well, looking deeper uh, on the wiki page of Modern Flat Earth Societies, all of this is really based on a couple of verses from the Bible. Really? Uh, yeah. And, and, and I don't know specifically which one. Can you paraphrase? Uh, basically. I look up that wiki page again, but... Uh, okay. I, I wonder where in the Bible it, it leads us toward believing that. Well, what it, what it leads me to believe is this is like a creationist agenda. That they're trying to push. Now you might be onto something there. You see what I'm saying? Sure. You might be onto something there. Um, a lot of uh, creationists believe the Earth is very young, and that man has only been here for you well, actually um, six thousand five hundred years. That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. And that might fit in with the sun only being what three thousand miles away. Right. And they talk about if <laughs> I think uh, the other nine points that John didn't get to tonight. Some of those points were. The idea of the firmament above, being right. an ice dome above us, the idea of Antarctica being surrounding right. uh, all of the continents, and that Admiral Byrd could never get past, you know, these certain points in Antarctica, and, and there, there's all these mysteries about Antarctica and what it is. And there were more more points. You're right. We didn't get to all of those, but right. some of, a lot some of it seems compelling. But it, the whole thing. Um, it just seems like this creationist agenda, like they're trying to push for whatever reason. It seems like a disinformation thing to, to muddy the waters 
for other, you know, to throw it in the ta throw it in the bucket with other sort of fringe ideas. Of well, the, the only the only place where they almost had me was uh, the airplane going one direction and the airplane going the other direction. Right, that's a good one. Um, I, I had to think about that a little bit. I'm still like not from continent to continent. I'm like, still not sure about that one. Uh, otherwise, no. I didn't buy any, but that one I'm going to have to give a little thought. That It seemed like that might have made a little sense to me, but, I mean, after all, the Earth is turning in one direction, the plane going in the other direction. Oh, there was another point about, like, you couldn't fly a plane, you couldn't get a flight from, say, South America to South Africa, or from South Africa to Australia. You would always have to go to the Northern Hemisphere and connect mm -hmm. somewhere in the Northern Hemisphere, like Dubai or in the UK, and then fly... To your, to your location in the southern hemisphere. And then if you looked at it on the flat Earth map, it would make sense because it would go in a straight line. Mm -hmm. But on the, on the spherical map, on the globe, it has to sort of go zigzag up and down up to the northern hemisphere. And that seemed a bit odd. Right. All right. Um, but just a few more things I thought I'd throw in there for, for a no. you know, conversation. Look, I appreciate so. it. I mean, what damage could you possibly do throwing anything in what we did tonight. I, yeah, it was really fun tonight. Uh, all right, hold, I, I've got to go. I'm at a break. We'll be back. This is Midnight in the Desert. I'm Art Bell. It's again until the audio resumes. We'll be in silence. But first, for Dark Matter News, I'm Leo Ashcraft. Southeast Asia braces for what could be a devastating blow from the super typhoon. Food, water, cots, generators, and other federal emergency supplies were rushed Tuesday from Hawaii and Guam to help Saipan after Typhoon Tudler blasted the tiny U.S. island in the western Pacific. After hitting the island, the typhoon strengthened into the Earth's most powerful storm of 2015, equivalent to a Category 5 hurricane with sustained winds of 180 miles per hour as it continued Monday across the Pacific Ocean. By Tuesday evening, the typhoon was downgraded from a super typhoon with winds around 130 miles an hour and gusts of 161, which is equal to a Category 4 storm. The typhoon was taking aim at Taiwan, China, and some of Japan's southern islands. Be prepared to grab a lawn chair or a warm blanket and look up. It's time for the best meteor shower of the year. The Perseids are the year's most popular and anticipated shower due to two factors, the warm weather and abundance of meteors that streak across the sky. Meteor showers occur as Earth passes through the dust left over from a passing comet. In this case, Earth is passing through particles left over from comet Swift-Tuttle. Small particles then enter Earth's atmosphere, come in around 59 kilometers an hour, and then quickly burn up in our atmosphere, creating a shooting star. The best part of this year is that it's almost a new moon, so even faint meteors will be visible. The Perseids are active from July 13th to August 26th. They peak on the night of August 12th through the 13th, with as many as 100 meteors an hour being visible from dark locations. This is Dark Matter News. <laughs> And again, what's the musical bumper? Around town on a floating skateboard like Marty McFly does in the classic 80s flick back to the future part two, then you could soon be in luck. A pair of innovators is trying to make the futuristic fantasy of riding a hoverboard into a reality. Husband and wife design team Jill and Greg Henderson launched a Kickstarter campaign for their Hindo hoverboard, a levitating skateboard that could hit hover parks as early as October of this year. <laughs> Little girl, little girl, stop, look, I need to you. The Kickstarter campaign, which ended in December of last year, was a resounding success. It brought in well over its initial goal of $250,000 in its first week. And before the campaign ended, the project had already raised nearly $500,000. But with all this hype, there comes an important question. How in the world does this thing work? The basic premise behind the technology is something called magnetic field architecture. MFA is Henderson's term for what others may call magnetic levitation, or maglev. 
which is already used to power super-fast hovering trains in Japan, China, and South Korea. These trains use magnets to create lift and thrust, and can travel at blistering paces because there's no friction between the train's wheels and the axles of the rails. But the technology behind the Hindo hoverboard is different from other applications of maglev. The most obvious difference is that unlike a train, the board doesn't follow a track. Instead, it hovers freely on top of a surface plated in copper. <laughs> But it could also be made to hover over aluminum, as well as a variety of non-metal materials that are also inductors. The technology behind the hoverboard is also offered in a scaled-back form as the White Box Developer Kit, which is simply a box equipped with the company's signature hover engines. For a look at these new futuristic hoverboards in action, visit DarkMatterNews.com. I'm Leo Ashcraft for Dark Matter News. Remember the screaming, screaming Lady commercial? People went berserk over the Screaming Lady commercial. Oh my God, I'm going to cancel. How can you have that on? I got email after email after email. You, you wouldn't believe it. And um, so they rotated and the Screaming Lady came out. A day or two passed. And then I'm inundated with zillions of emails. Oh, I miss the screaming lady. What happened to the screaming lady? <sighs> Duncan in New Zealand says, um, by wormhole, I agree. This is all a psyop with the mass wakening of people occurring. It's just a distraction to stop us looking out into the universe. Frankly, citing business reasons for his anonymity <laughs> raises some serious red flags with me. Well, I understood it. I understood the reason for his not wanting to reveal his real name. Would you? I mean, he had solid business reasons, I guess. <sighs> Steve on Skype somewhere. Hi, you're on the air. Hi, how you doing? I... I'm doing pretty well, Steve. Get good and close to where the microphone is on your computer, because you sound like you're in a hollow room. Okay, I'm, I'm calling from Germany. I'm ex-military. I was working, used to work on the Persian missiles and stayed over here. Um, well, I've been uh, listening to your program today. It was really great. Uh, this flat earth thing, you know, I never, ever thought the world could be flat. <laughs> but um, I was I also was watching some of these YouTube videos about the flat earth. And they got some pretty interesting uh, facts that 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 make you go, hmm, could it be? So, <laughs> well, um, of those, okay, you watched. I know there are YouTube videos. What is it that impressed you? Well, what impressed me the most is what, what I think it was a lighthouse. There was a few videos. It was a lighthouse, and they went uh, a, a few a few miles away, and they were trying to say, well, if the Earth it's really round, a curvature. You shouldn't be able to see the lighthouse anymore at this distance. Mm. Well, of course, the lighthouse sticks out uh, or up, right? So I guess as you went further and further, more and more of the lighthouse would disappear until finally even the blinking light up top would be gone. Right, exactly. But it wasn't. It was straight on. You mean the lighthouse stayed... Uh, in full view, no matter how far you went, it stayed in the view. It stayed in full view, and that was the thing that was really impressive to me. Well, it's impressive, but it's impossible. Well, yeah, but I, you know, I don't want to believe it. I really don't. But I don't know. Have you yourself looked at any of these YouTube videos? I have. Brother? Actually, I have. Yes, and and a few of their arguments are kind of interesting. Uh, I think I mentioned the airplane, right? The, the one he right, made. Right. That that still is grabbing me a little bit. But uh, the amount of stuff that has to be fake and wrong for it to be true. I mean, I, the sun three thousand miles away. Really? No, no, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know it's 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 not possible. But there's just some things that are really that you scratch your head. Oh, you um, yeah, it would be nice if you do an, uh, another show about this flat earth thing. And um, it's good to hear you back on the air. I don't want to waste anybody's time with a more important call than mine. All right, well, just out of curiosity, though, if you don't mind, how did you hear about us? And why are you in Germany? 
Well, I used to be in the Army. I worked on the Persian missiles. Yes. And I, I, I stayed over here. You know, I met a girl and fell in love. Ah, uh, uh, yes. <laughs> and um, I, I've been uh, listening to Dark Matter for a long time, and uh, I used to listen to, uh, what's her name, Carrie Cassidy on Project mm -hmm. Camelot and Stephen Greer. I'm really interested. I've been following this stuff on UFOs. Oh, man, I can't. I cannot wait to have Stephen Greer on again. I Did yeah. you hear the statement I played that Steve Greer made? No. What was it? Oh, you didn't? No, no. Seriously? You know what? Uh, stay right where you are. I'm going to turn you down a little bit, and I'm going to play something here that uh, that I want you to hear. Um, so, let's see. You're in Germany, right? But I've got somebody else over here. Uh, hold on in Germany. Uh, Adam, hello. Hey, Art. I feel like I'm in a time machine listening to your show. It, it, it goes so quick. You've got such an interesting and diverse uh, number of guests on there. Um, I wanted to say that uh, I was lucky enough uh, in uh, uh, my work industry to have access to um, the press passes to get into the STS-2 uh, or space shuttle launch site. Yes, sir. And uh, I was an audio enthusiast. And at the STS-2 launch, I was able to, to bring in a pair of Electra Voice RE-15 mics and a little nice. Nakamichi uh, battery-operated deck. Mm -hmm. I had this great recording in STS-2 launch. I mean, was, when the thing does the roll, you know, as it clears the oh, launch yeah. tower, oh, yeah. you can hear that. You can hear the fire crackling out of the engines. And now that you've got this great streaming stereo platform, um, if you'd like, I would be happy to send you uh, a, a non-compressed copy of that to do with I what you will. I would love it. I would love it. I would love it. I would love it. Send it to artbell at artbell.com. All right. Any any file size limitation on the email server? It's a good question. I think if it's uh, how big is it? Do you know? Well, if I send it at like ninety six kilobits, yes, uh, uh, twenty four, uh, whatever that twenty four ninety six stream is, I think it probably would be about twelve to fifteen megabits. Whew, that might be pushing it. I'd be happier if it was slightly under ten. I'm not sure what limits, if anything, I've got on, but I think it might be around ten. I'll, I'll squeeze it in under that. All right. Give it a shot, would you? You and, got it. And I'll play it. Yes, and you're right in stereo. Look, everybody do me a favor. Tomorrow, Bob Crane has these amazing earbuds. When I say amazing, I really mean amazing. I don't know what they're made out of at the end, but they conform to your ear. And when you plug in earbuds to your, you know, I don't know what, your phone or your iPad or whatever, it's like you came into a new universe with this program. It'll sound so Good. They're like $9.95, which I think cheats Bob Crane. Call him in the morning. Tell him Art Bell told you to call. Get a pair of those on the way, and then you can review them on the air for me. They're amazing. Call him at 1-800-522-8863. Uh, I've done those commercials for years, so I actually know his, his number. 1-800-522-8863. All right, now, uh, let me see. I'm going to have to manipulate a little bit here, and I'm going to have to clear that, and I'm going to have to bring up the statement by Dr. Greer. This is astounding to me. Um, now, I'm going to say something here because this is enough years after it happened. Stephen Greer. Um, a few years ago, there was a show called um, Coast to Coast with Art Bell. And it was on the cover of Time magazine, and I was one of his favorite guests. And um, when I'd be on that show, it really lit things up at certain agencies. And one time I was on his show when, a few years back, uh, towards the end of his career there. And this issue came up, and I said, well, you know, I have a source high up in SETI that confirms to me that they, in fact, have received inter interplanetary signals but in a kind of phased, not normal array. It was kind of a pulsed um, array, and that it was kept secret and covered up. And um, the SETI people were furious. Subsequently, Seth Shostak got on the show and just said, well, we don't know what he's talking about, and he probably talked to some volunteer computer operator because we have all this network of volunteers. 
What Howard Bell didn't know, and what Seth Shostak didn't know, which I'm going to say now because it's enough water gone under the bridge, is that um, the guy who told me that was the founder of the study project uh, and, and the Drake equation, Dr. Drake. He told me that, that they had had that contact. Moreover, a man who had been one of Carl Sagan's best friends and best man at his wedding um, confirmed it. And he had been present when the wow signal came in at Harvard. <laughs> okay, so back to Steve in Germany. Yeah, I bet. Listen, you know, uh, Steve and Greer, he, he's, he's, he's a good guy. But after the serious uh, movie documentary he made, you, he's, um, you know, I don't trust him anymore. He's looking a little more and more shady to me. Not to me. I, I've always trusted him. And you know what? That statement he just made, and he's going to be on the show. And believe me, trust me, when I tell you we're going to have him explain that, and then we're going to have Seth Shostak on, because what he essentially just said is we haven't been told uh, the truth. We've had contact. I mean, that's what the man just said. We've well, no, had contact. Course. Well, I believe that. I think everybody believes that. No, everybody doesn't believe that. We've, we've had Seth on a million times, asked him about contact, and, of course, he has said that, uh, yeah, we have the wow signal, but Greer was talking about real contact and the fact that it was, it's not known. And so if we've actually had contact, that's big, big news. Well, yeah, of course that's big news. Are you talking about... That the government has had contact, or that 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 city has had contact. Well, that city had contact, and and okay. uh, apparently we didn't know about it. So I I'm telling you that's a blockbuster if true. I listen, I've got to run, but thank you for okay, the call. Okay, when is he coming back? When is this show going to happen? Yeah, it'll be. Yeah, I don't know. He's on our. I I don't want to say. We're, we we can't talk about our guests for some reason. Okay. There. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks, uh, thanks for hearing, hearing me out. And uh, you're very welcome. Happy to do it. Okay, who is JP? I guess that's right. Is that correct? JP? No? Not too bad. All right, JP, you would have been on the air, but I guess you're not going to be unless you're there. One last try. Are you there? Nope. Okay, no problem. Uh, let's go to Pat. You're on the air. Hello. Hi, Art. This is Pat, also known as Magical Chat. Okay. I'm calling on behalf of the good people at Pound DM Talk Group on the social media platform Twitter. Really? Yes. And I'd like to give a shout out to Skinny President, the only shout out that she'll let me give. <laughs> My question is, when will you play one velvet morning? Because we're all waiting. Well, I'll take my answer off the air. Okay. All right. Uh, problem. Probably never. Well, that, that's not true. I won't say never. We have a restriction against playing tunes prior to 1972 unless they have been remastered. So that's the deal. Uh, so I don't want to say never because they are actually in talks so that the people who have songs that are, you know, prior to 1972 can be played and can be paid for, but right now there's no mechanism to play to pay for them, so we're stuck. I'm sorry. Uh, there's nothing we can do. Hopefully, the talks are underway right now. They'll get it straightened out, and then as we can play current commercial music uh, post-72, soon we'll be able to pl play the stuff prior to 72. I hope that kind of answers your question. Let's go to uh, Charlotte something or another. Hello on the phone. Hello, it's Calvin. Charlottetown, is that it? Yeah, Charlottetown, Prince Edward Island. Nova Scotia, okay. Uh, uh, Prince Edward Island, actually. It shows up Nova Scotia in the car already. It does, yes. Yeah. Okay, proceed. Proceed. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I, I just, yeah, I just wanted to, uh, <laughs> I just wanted to say that, uh, about John there, uh, you know, like he doesn't seem uh, to sound too much uh, too much older or younger than I am. Uh, I just wanted to say, like, you know, it's kind of like almost depressing that uh, <laughs> you know 
we're supposed to be the progressive generation here, and you know we still got people hung up on whether or not the Earth is flat, which has been disproven, you know, thousands of years ago. It's just kind of a bleak thing to think about, and I'm not sure why anybody would ever. Well, I, I, I think what what made me feel bleak about it was that John otherwise sounded very bright. And no, absolutely, right? It, it's very concerning to me that he could go down a trail that a bright person shouldn't be able to go down. No, it's, it's you know it's kind of it's kind of sad almost, and I don't want to like belittle the guy because no. as we both agreed on, you know, he sounds like really smart, but it's just kind of uh, it's like I don't know, like what, how do you uh, I don't know how do you go that way, you know? <laughs> like, I I don't. I, I'm sorry. I just flat excuse the word flat. Don't know. <laughs> yeah, no, I, anyway, you know, that's all I just really wanted to say. I, I think a lot of other people listening tonight probably think the same thing. Well, thank you for the call, and I, I'm sure they do. Uh, Roy, you're on the air wherever you are. It is I, J.C. Webster the Third. Oh, my God. You did not. This is J.C.? No, 640, I'm 640. Uh, yeah, it's not. It's not J.C. It sounded like J.C., didn't it? That's not J.C. J.C. has not been on his Facebook page in a long time. Something, I hope nothing has happened to J.C. Nothing untoward has occurred to J.C. Anyway, Kurt, uh, your turn. You're on the air. Hello. Hello. How are you today? Um, mystified, but here. Let me turn this uh, I, could, I should have so said I he, double. Should have said flat mystified. Anyway, well, you know what he yeah. said. I'm flattered to be on your show, and I that get he. I think he was fooling us. I do. <laughs> I just <laughs> have a sense in my just in my gut that he knew that. How in the world can anybody believe that the Earth is still flat? You're going to get in a ship, and then you're just going to fall off into where? Yeah, I think I think you're wrong because I think he did honestly believe it. I'm sorry to say. Oh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. I can't believe that anybody in 2015 believed that we're on a flat plane. <laughs> uh, bubbles, when we blow a bubble, mm -hmm. it turns to a sphere. I think the Lord, with his breath, <laughs> made the planet. So that's a sign that a bubble, a bubble's not flat. I don't know, just an idea. But I just don't <laughs> believe that somebody in 2015 believed the earth flat. I just, are they nuts or what? Are they, you know... A cult, or I just don't know. I don't know. I'll let you go. You have no. a good night. All right, I'm going. Bye -bye. Yeah. Bye -bye. Yeah. All right, well, that's you know, Man, where did that program go? That's the name of it. Where did it go? We'll be back tomorrow night. Tomorrow night is Bigfoot. I'll go that far. We'll tell you it's all about Bigfoot. One you're not going to want to miss as Midnight in the Desert takes over. Listener by listener by listener by listener. Good night. And that was Art Bell's Midnight in the Desert, the Flat Earth Debate, originally from August 5th, 2015. With that, we will bring ourselves to a close as well. Make sure you do like, share, and subscribe. Be kind to one another. And as always, please make sure you do release the Krakens as we march along this night and every overnight here from day one. Till then again, have a great night. Thanks for being with us. And we'll see you all tomorrow as we continue to march along in this world, this universe known as Midnight in the Desert for our overnight show and from day one for our show. Have a great night and enjoy your night's sleep.